What's good guys, it's your boy DP back with the second Splinterlands video, not including the shorts. Um, in the last one I showed you how to make money in Splinterlands. I broke down the game modes and, and all the bits and bobs that you're going to need to learn and understand to really start to progress in the game. Uh, but one of the questions I kept getting from people were what cards should they be renting because I previously recommended renting over buying early on at least while you're trying to learn the game anyway um, to actually be able to maintain position in bronze 2 uh, or bronze 1 and I actually get these wins and get that deck incoming. Uh, so in this video I'm going to break down the cards that I recommend to you. Um, if we go over to the Splinterland screen right now you can see the cards that I'm actually renting. Um, I'm renting all of these ones. Uh, that said I don't recommend that they're, they're not all for recommendations a lot of these I have purely to to bloat my my power in order to be playing up in silver where I currently play um, but the cards I recommend to you are more than sufficient to win the battles and get you to silver should you choose to rent other cards purely for power afterwards so the main splinters we're going to be focusing on are quite frankly the the three simple basic ones that are seemingly strongest in bronze and that is water fire and earth because death is just a little bit on the soft side too many of the cards are slow and weak at the, at the bronze uh, level cap and life tends to be a little bit too costly in mana a lot of the battles are quite low mana and it's hard to put together a really quality life splinter deck because you know, it's most of the best cards are in the, in the range of like nine to five mana a time. Uh, so really, you want to focus on on the on the three starter sets, should we say, as they would in Pokemon. So let's kick it off uh, immediately with water because water is essentially the meta. You're going to see a huge amount of water and what happens is people play Ulrich uh, at the summoner who will boost magic damage. Then they'll spam a whole bunch of magic cards in there and they'll run through you like a hot knife through butter. So what can we do to counter that? Well, obviously you could play a mirror and hope your cards go first or or you can play the hard counter to it, and that is to play the Bortus Summoner. And while you're playing the Bortus Summoner, he's reducing their magic damage, and what you then do is play this card right here, Torhilo the Frozen, as your first card. And this is because he has the ability called Void, and what Void will do is any damage that is one, will do zero to him. They need to have a damage of at least two magic after Bortus has reduced it to actually even touch you. So as a result, unless they have Gino Shainus, they pretty much can't hit you um, and they just sit there and wait to lose until Hilo blows through them like nothing because he does four damage and they can't even hit him. So it doesn't matter how much you miss with your slow speed, you're going to win in the end. Um, and it is an amazing, absolutely amazing card. I've won several mana, uh, sorry, water battles simply by having Portis and him and no other cards in my hand because I could see they haven't played Jin O'Shaughness anytime recently, therefore most likely don't have him. So you can either purchase him. That's a I honestly think $26 is good value for this card, the amount that I use it and the amount that it's earning me in deck. Um, but obviously the, the focus of the video is renting. So what we're going to do is go here. We're going to type in Torhilo. Up he comes. You can see I'm renting him for 2.1 deck a day. Um, and in bronze, you're very easily earning anywhere between one and three deck down in that bronze uh, two bracket. Once you're up into bronze one, should you choose to you know, invest a little bit more in, in some more higher powered rentals later on, you can play this card to be earning you the likes of eight deck a battle so it's very easy to offset the cost um 2.1 is a very very good rent you can see the best price right now they're saying is about 3.7 it depends when you rent them in the season and it just depends on the day earlier on i actually shot this video earlier and screwed it up and i wasn't happy with the amount of rambling so i reshot it um but earlier on you could actually find quite a few cards around the similar price about 2.3 so it's a case of just clicking on here seeing what pops up at the moment it looks like 3.7 is the best there's a 1.9 that's it that's exactly what i'm talking about a little bit of patience um and you could rent cheaper than me just get it for three days or whatever so you can quickly scramble it through the checkout because your card is not safe in the checkout somebody can actually check it out while you're trying to check it out so get it as quick as you can you can always then click this later on and extend the rental so um get it as quick as you can so hello is it's hard to say because magic, uh, you know, the, the magic Ulrich deck in water is the meta. 
Um, but Torhilo is such an effective anti-meta that he is, in fact, kind of a meta himself. It's, it's a very strange position that he's in. Amazing card. Highly, highly recommend you go and rent that one straight away. And a perfect card to pair with it is this one right here, Axe Master. $14 to buy is a little bit of a pain. I was actually going to buy him a couple of months ago, about $6. So it pains me that I didn't, that I hesitated on joining the game for too long, and now the price is more than doubled. Um, I'm just going to wait a little while. And hopefully it comes back down, but no my luck it'll just keep going up like everything um, But what makes Axe Master amazing is he's a perfect complement if you have the mana available to go with Torhilo um, And this is because he's a ranged card really fast good health and attacks twice So four damage a turn really high speed means not many cards that have a chance at dodging him uh, Jinno Shaneus is a little bit quick so can occasionally do so but Axe Master Torhilo as a combination is the hard counter to Jinno Shanus. Torhilo can tank him for so long, but will most likely miss most of his hits trying to kill Jinno Shanus due to the speed difference. Um, whereas Axe Master is fast, so you have him at the back. Axe Master just chops O'Shanus like nobody's business and gets him out of there. He's just a great card in general. Really, really good card to pick up early on. It was actually the first card I ever rented. Um, if we go in here, you can see he's a bargain as well. If we go to Axe Master. Uh, you see, I'm renting at 1.2 deck a day, um, and yet I've, I've used him three times today in battles that have won me 13, 14, and 16 decks. So clearly, clearly paying is uh, you know, making his way, but making his due. Um, 1.2 is the best price right now. Uh, we got a 1.4, 1.5, 1.5, 1.6. .5, if we hit refresh, we might find a cheaper one. Not yet, but you, you do that a few times. Patience. There you go, right there. 0 0.9 and a 1.0. Um, if you're able to do that and rent at even lower cost, even better value, better bang for your buck. Amazing card that I actually want to purchase at some point. Right, switching back, the last magic card that I would actually, sorry, magic, it's, it's because water is essentially magic spam. So if you ever hear me say magic card, I'm talking about water. Uh, but Kalpanisha is the next bad boy. And although he does no damage, absolutely none, no melee, no magic, no ranged, He's amazing tank. He, she, whatever kelp is. Five speed, which doesn't even come into play, but five health and only two mana cost. Nine dollars is not bad. Um, if it goes down a little bit more, I might actually buy one because I, I play it that regularly. Um, and there are going to be a lot of battles where they ban a melee lead. No, so you can't play Torhilo in your magic counter, but you'll need to play Kelp with Bortus instead. Um, or that the mana is just too low for you to build any sort of actual team up. So you're gonna play Kelp instead of Torhilo then too. Uh, very, very cheap to rent as well. If we go over here, click on Kelp. I used to borrow Kelp from Bulldog, in fact. The other two cards I've never borrowed from him. I've only ever rented, but I used to borrow Kelp, um, which is another option if you've got a lot of friends playing the game. They've likely used to use this an awful lot in the low leagues too. I'm paying 1.3 deck a day, but that's purely out of impatience. I just didn't want to sit here refreshing and trying to beat people all day. Uh, if we click it, there's a 0 0.1 right there, uh, but you see someone's just ninjaed me to that one already. That's popped up saying it's not available, but 0 0.1, 0 0.5s, uh, 1.1s, very, very easy to rent Kelp, a lot cheaper than I am renting him. Uh, excellent card that can be used in a multitude of battles. A lot of rule sets will ban various cards, but Kelp will never be banned because, and unless it's odd mana only battles, then he's not going to be banned because he's not a melee, he's not a ranged, and he's not a magic card. He's just a, a fantastic tank. You could also stick him on the back if you have a card that you want to protect from like sneak attackers um, and snipers and things like that too. So uh, really, really useful. Highly, highly recommend uh, Kelp Initiate. Next, we're going to go over to Fire. And Finus is the only card you're actually going to need to rent, in my opinion. Amazing card. This ability is one of the big reasons. And it reach allows a melee card to attack from the second slot. They don't have to actually be in the first one to do damage. And as you can see, two damage, five speed and eight health is enormous. Uh, early on when so many low cards pretty much have like one or two health um, on the speeds are like two or three at best. So Finus is always getting ahead of them and is often one-shotting cards. Uh, playing under a Malric lead, the Malric summoner, uh, he's gonna have three damage as well. So mass damage, just stick Finus behind either Cerberus if the mana is a little bit lower or Living Lava if you've got a 
bit more mana to play with when building your hand. Finest is a fantastic card at $6. I probably would have bought him had he not already been a card that you can... Um, I just realized, has somebody delegated me one of those? No, I, th I think I must have rented two. I've probably rented one and then found one at a better deal as one is ending. Um, but you're able to uh, get this card as a reward card in chests as well. So I'm kind of hoping I'm eventually going to get that and won't have to actually rent him. But if we pop over here right now and I'll show you the price, absolute bargain. Uh, yes, I must have done because I know I was renting him about 0.5 deck a day. Um, but I've picked one up today clearly because as you can see, I've still got nearly six days worth left. A 0.1 deck. That's, I mean, one battle in Bronze 2, I was earning at least two deck. So easily paying for himself when I'm, when, whenever a fire deck, fire hand wins. Um, and we can see if we go to the best price right now, 0.15. But there's a there's a couple of 0.1s, uh, 0.16, 0.3. Uh, these, these are more than worthwhile still renting as well at that cost. So it'd be very, very easy for you to pick a finest card up. Excellent card. And the only card you're actually going to need to rent for fire early on. As I said, sticking behind Cerberus or Living Lava. Chuck a Spy in there. Uh, chuck a, uh, a Fire Elemental or uh, one, of, one of those Sparks cards and, and, and your money. You're going to pick up a win very very easily uh, so moving to earth the last splinter we need to actually care about in bronze we're going for a summoner card this one is called mylor and he's amazing i used to borrow this it was delegated to me from uh from bulldog and once he took it back i realized how much i used it and i went and rented one as you can see to buy one it's just it's just out of my price range right now i'm new to splint lands i'm in my fourth season um, i've only just started making videos for it so i'm not in a position to really be affording 60 dollars a card um, i have started buying cards but nowhere near that price range yet but what makes mylor amazing is the ability Thorns, and it goes on every single Earth card, well, every card that you'll have in your hand, um, and basically any card that is melee that hits you will be counted for two damage by Thorns. And in Bronze, as I said earlier, so many of the cards are like two health, three health, so Mylor's gonna kill them with the counter attack. The only weakness to it is if you try and guess that they're gonna play like a fire deck or something, and then they play Ulrich, you're going to get smashed because Thorns does not counter magic or ranged attacks. And that's something you have to remember. Where this card comes in really helpful is in certain rule sets. There are some rule sets, in fact, that will only allow melee cards. So go for Mylor lead and every single attack they do to any of your cards, you're gonna counter and win very, very easily. If we pop over and I'll show you the actual cost of it. Uh, my law, I'm renting at eight deck a day. So most expensive rental I have right now um, in, in this whole recommendation, recommendation, I have one card that is actually more than this, but you won't need it. It's for silver. Um, and best price right now, 7.9. If we flick through, yeah, there's a 7.9. There's another eight. There's a 9.7, which is still doable. You may want to rent him last. You may want to try just those magic and fire cards at first, just to keep the, the, uh, the deck costs down a day until... Until you're building up a bit of rating and, and your deck winnings are a little bit higher, of course. Um, but yeah, it's it is a very affordable card in my opinion. What's a 3.4? My lord, can I rent that? No, someone beat me to it. <laughs> I would have rented that and sent this one back. Wow, that's a shame. Um, <laughs> the, the joys of making videos on the fly. But yeah, if you've got patience, you can clearly see you might get an even cheaper card. But Mylor is the only card you're going to need for Earth as well. Every other card that they give you for free will fill out the rest of it. Stone Golem will probably be your first card. Um, and then you're going to chuck in maybe Goblin Thief, a card that I've bought recently. Uh, Child of the Forest, I think is the name. Excellent ranged card. Um, there's a big tree that I forget the name of, but you'll know the card I'm talking about if you just look at it. Great cards to play alongside that. Um, the last rentals are neutral cards, and it's this one right here, Furious Chicken, which in my opinion is not worth nearly $9. Um, not, not for this anyway. It, it Basically, the purpose of this card 
is not to be a great card. It's to be able to take an extra shot while taking no mana off of your hand cost. So uh, for that purpose, it's excellent. You can stick it there. So it takes one more shot, buys you another turn to, to get your ranged character to, to, to take a hit or protect a card that you've got hidden at the back. You can perhaps stick chicken right at the back. So a sniper hits uh, hits him instead. Uh, it's a useful, useful card. And unfortunately, as a result of that, having no mana it's a little bit expensive if we go into here i think the rental is a little higher than most of them as well yeah i'm paying 2.9 out of impatience but you can see there's been some 0.6s today uh 2.8 2.8 2.8 we have refreshed see if we can find anything cheaper for you guys um there we go there's a few cheaper if you were fast enough you could grab one I'm clearly not fast enough because I'm sat here talking doing a video, uh, but an excellent card that can go in any splinter. You you can you can stick him in a fire, water, or or even in a, in in the earth. Um, I don't really ever play chicken when playing water personally. I've got a very regimented couple of decks that I, uh, splinters, hands, whatever you want to call them that I like to play. I like the term deck, but unfortunately that's also the name of the currency, so it probably confused people. We'll go for hand. Okay, uh, I've got a couple of Define hands I like to play and chicken just takes up a spot, but I do play chicken regularly in both fire and earth um, and quite often sometimes in death. So very useful card. Uh, lastly, um, I don't have this one rented. I'm actually having it borrowed from uh, one of my viewers. These are all cards that have been lent to me by viewers and friends. Uh, but this it's a very cheap card and I would be renting it or even possibly have purchased it at this price um, had I not had it lent to me. And the reason for this one is again, very, very low mana and yes, it's squishy. Just don't put it at the back. Don't put it at the front. Put it maybe one from the back. Somewhere it's got a little bit of protection because um, the purpose of this card is this ability, slow. It's gonna take one speed off of every enemy monster as long as it's alive. If they kill it, they get that speed back. So keep that in mind. That's why you gotta protect them a little bit. Um, um, but basically where it comes in use is say uh, a melee cards uh, are, are banned and you know your opponent's gonna play Ulric, so you can't play Bortus and Torhillo and you're gonna be in a bit of trouble, you might wanna do an Ulric versus Ulric Water Mirror. Um, so what can you do to make sure that you're not just you know at the mercy of RNG, at the mercy of the gods for who goes first. You play Ooze. He reduces all their card speeds by one. Now your monsters are going to go first. You're going to have a much, much better chance, bearing in mind you don't get dodged a lot or something crazy happens, of winning the mirror battle. And that's where Ooze really comes in handy. Very, very handy card in, uh, in fire mirror low mana battles because it'll allow your Serpentine Spy to kill their one before their one moves. And that's a really key thing on winning those low mana fire battles. So Ooze is a great card and also very, very affordable. If we pop here, you can see um, 0 0.19 deck a day. So I would have no hesitation renting this at, at, at pretty much up to about the, this cost. As long as it's below 0.1, sorry, 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 one deck, I'd be happy. Um, but preferably 0.5 or below, I, I would say it more than earns its, uh, its uh, deck there. So uh, that would be the cards that you're gonna need. From there, it's simply a case of whatever power you need now to get that 1,000 power to be eligible for Bronze 2, go to the market, uh, it doesn't matter, I, I don't know what you'll need. You might have some reward cards, you might have bought some other cards. So it's gonna be different for anybody, but let's just say, uh, for, for argument's sake, you need 300, you've got 700 power, you need 300 more power to qualify for Bronze 2. We'll scroll down, there's a 300 cards here. Now we just find the one that's generally the cheapest. There's no point in uh, you know, renting this uh, for eight. We got a bunch here that are one. There's some down here. There's there you go. We've got a point five. We'll just spam this. Be patient. Get yourself a cheap card, and uh, and now you're qualifying. You're earning deck currency to offset your rentals, and you just build up from there. That's all you have to do. It doesn't cost much. Probably something along the lines of uh, fourteen to seventeen deck a day. That's fourteen to seventeen cents a day to rent the cards that I have suggested to you, um, and they're going to be more than strong enough to still win you back battles even in silver. So get them, get those battles, start earning your deck, build up your power, and then you can start to flirt with the possibility of perhaps going to bronze one if your rating is high enough, if, if, if you're winning enough battles. So say if we go, if we go to uh, here, for example, uh, if your rating is, is higher than your current league, but your power isn't, 
go and have a look at the market see if it, see if you can pick up a couple of 1000 cards uh really cheap at that particular day or something and if you're if you know you're earning enough to offset it go for it move up a division keep doing this as you're gradually moving up and knowing that you're strong enough to stay in that division and offset those earnings remaining at a profit that's exactly what i'm doing right now i'm renting seven of one card that i don't even play just for the power because i can win with the cards that i've recommended you and earn 15 deck a day in silver. Um, you know, my rating, as you can see, I'm I'm almost strong enough to be in silver two, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bother renting to get to silver two. I'm just gonna keep boosting my rating, earning more and more deck, playing in silver three, where I get better rewards. So those are my recommendations, guys. Fantastic cards. If you're if you're a bit money bags um, and you're better off than me and can actually afford to buy some of these. Uh, you, you might as well do that you know if, if you're if you're in it for investment look for the right day when the market is kind of bouncing around a little bit pick the cards up on a cheap day because you're going to rent them all the time every season i re-rent these because you tend to drop down two divisions uh, i finished in silver three and i started this season in bronze two so again i've got to re-rent those cards and work my way back up they're consistent rentals fantastic cards and i highly recommend them if you've enjoyed this video please hit the sub button. I am really making a push uh, for my Splinter Lands content. I stream this Monday to Thursday over on Twitch, so check me out. The links are in the description. I'll probably put them in the pinned comment as well. Um, you can support me through Patreon, where I'll be recommending certain cards to you a little bit earlier and things like that, get you in on the, get you early in on the ground. Um, and yeah, hit the old like. I'm, I'm gonna be covering a lot of Splinter Lands going forward on both YouTube and Twitch, and I hope to see you guys around. Till next time, guys. We out of here.